high and low Still couldn't find nobody Nobody greater Nobody greater Nobody greater than you Hi and welcome to TNT Teaching and Talking the Bible. Welcome back to the show. I hope you tuned in last week when we were talking about church conflict and what causes it. So this week we're talking about church conflict part two and we're talking about um, how to solve it. What do you do? How do you how do you um, rectify it? How do you stop it before it becomes a full-blown snowball taking off down the hill with out of control and you don't know what to do? So joining me today is uh, Sister Tracy Anderson Hello. and Sister Betty Sanders. And we're just going to give our take on it. I really like to hear from the pastors. Wouldn't you guys like to hear? I'd like to hear from some of you pastors out there. Tell me what you think about um, church conflict and, and how you would handle it. So Sister Tracy is going to start us off today. Amen. Um, we know that we have to deal with conflict in the church, mm -hmm. um, conflict between the members. Yeah. Um, but the Bible teaches us in how to deal with this conflict. We have to face it dead on. Yeah. We have to confront the situation. And it's the way we confront the situation. Yes. We need to do things decent and in order. Mm -hmm. We need to do things um, carefully, mm -hmm. in a meek manner, mm -hmm. um, with the goal of restoring the relationship. Mm -hmm not just keeping the division going, exactly. but our goal in conflict is to restore the relationship and um, uh, move forward in a loving manner. So mm -hmm. again, how we deal with the conflict by um, confronting it is very important. I'm gonna read a scripture, Matthew uh, chapter 18, verses 15 through 18. Mm -hmm. um, and this is dealing with conflict between the members. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And, and he shall neglect to hear, and if he shall neglect to hear them, Tell it unto the church, but if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a brethren man and a publican, a heathen man and a publican. So first you want to go to your brother, just to him, and you want to tell him, you know, what the problem is. And you want to, you want to go to him meekly and mildly, and you want to go to him with love, not in anger. Because when you go to a person in anger, they're on the defensive, they're not trying to hear you, and then that's when, and if they don't hear you after you've gone to them, just between you and them, if they don't hear you, then take somebody with you. Ask one of the missionaries to go with you. Ask one of your friends in the church to go with you to confront this person. Right. Uh, but you don't. You never want to do it in an intimidating way. You always want to have the goal of uh, restoring the relationship and moving to get moving forward together in love. Amen. 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 And make sure that when you go to confront your brother or your sister, make sure that that the person that you're taking with you is not on either side. Yes. It's so important that they don't uh, be on your side or their side. That they in between and want to hear what the situation is and what the problem is and want it solved. Because a lot of times people love to make a bigger conflict out of what's going on or whatever the issue is or whatever the problem is. They ain't trying to solve it. They want to keep rolling. Right. And so it's important that you learn what this here says in him. Take it to two or three. If that don't work, mm -hmm. said, take them before the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. If they don't want, to, if the church can't solve your problem, then you heal them. You just need to be cast out. That's what yes. the Bible said. Yes. You know, even though we're not gonna cast nobody out of the church, we're gonna pray for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we ain't gonna we ain't in the in the in the uh, frame of mind to be throwing people out of the ministry. No. 
Right. You know, we have to pray for them and know that they're just the way they're going to be. Right. Because some people are just going to be like they are. Yeah. It don't matter how the word hit them. It don't matter how you try to confront them. It don't matter how you try to teach them or tell them. They're just going to be who they are. Because right. some people carry around uh, a spirit or uh, architect. They carry around a spirit of confusion. Mm -hmm. They carry around a spirit of, of, of dislike. Mm -hmm. and, and they like being like that. Yeah, you know, and, and they like having issues and they like having problems right. with people in the church. Yeah. And it doesn't in, in the world what they're doing. Yes. Yeah, that's you know, true. so that's carrying them to the pastor is, is a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but sometimes they don't even solve the problem. Mm -mm. No. And, and that's true. Um, you know, when you uh, have a problem with your brother or your sister, you should go to them. But I always say this, this is my favorite saying, think about what you're going to say and, and don't say it. Just don't mm -hmm. say it. Because when you speak out of anger, out of hurt, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you're speaking out of, that's the words that's coming out. Mm -hmm. That's what's fueling your conversation. Mm -hmm. If you're angry, then anger is speaking. Mm -hmm. If you're hurt, then hurt is speaking. Yes. And so if you're mad, madness is speaking. So you got to think about what you're going to say. You know how many times I have put things on Facebook and I was sitting up there, I'm just going into a wild rant and then I sit there and I read it and then I just go delete. Yes. <laughs> because you find that when you write stuff down and you start thinking about it, you really go, wait a minute, I'm better than this. I'm not going to lower myself to go into this mm -hmm. you know you can and then when that's all done and you calm down then you can go and talk to your yes. sister or your brother mm -hmm. and and try to explain to them listen this what you did wasn't really cool yes. you know that that really bothered me that hurt me and We've had to do it, haven't we not, ladies? Oh, we, yes. We've all had to do it. Yes. We've all had to go to someone and say, hey, you, what you just said, I didn't appreciate it. Yes. But you can't go to them mad. You can't go to them hurt. You can't go to them upset. Because when you do, um, and I always say, I'm too old to fight. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not getting ready to go put on a white beater or anything like that. Uh, hey, you hurt my feelings. So let's just both go home and pray about it. Let's be Christians. Let's go home and pray about it, think about it, then we'll come back together and talk about it. So we're going to talk more about this. I know this is a big problem for churches, and, but we have to learn how to handle with in a Christian manner. Yes. So we'll be right back. Stay with us. At this moment, in Stockton, Sacramento, and San Francisco, a University of the Pacific student has made a decision. A decision to learn, live, and lead with purpose in mind. Here, it's all about moments. Moments that change lives, families, communities, economies, the world. At University of the Pacific, these moments give life purpose. They give us purpose, too. After all, we share one future. Join us. University of the Pacific. Hi, I'm Darren Kent, your host for Fright Time Theater every Saturday night at 10 o'clock. So email me at DarrenKentMyTV26 at gmail.com. I want to hear what movies you want to see. So I'll see you for Monster Movie Madness every Saturday night at 10 o'clock on MyTV26. And welcome back to TNT, Teaching and Talking the Bible. And we're talking about how to deal with church conflict. And I'm telling you, this is something that we probably should have did maybe more segments on it. But for now, we are trying to deal with how to deal with church conflict. And I'm going to read Galatians. And I'm going to read Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. And it says, Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, 
Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, yes. considering thyself, lest I also be tempted. And we have to really consider, and I, I hope you guys agree with me, um, we have to consider one another's feelings. Yes. And you want to talk to a person the way you want to be talked to. Yes. So you don't want to be, you know, so mad that you're just spewing out words. Right. And, you know, and you wound that person. Um, because I find that in, in church life, uh, most people are looking for a way to run, especially That's if good. they're not grounded and rooted in the Word of God. They're looking for an excuse, an escape, anything they can use to run out the church and say, I'm not coming back no more. And so before that happens, we want to nip it in the bud. Amen. We want to we want to take care of it. And on our footnotes on Galatians six and one, it says, "Thus to restore a person means to lead him or her back to true repentance and to a full commitment to Jesus Christ and His ways. This may involve disciplinary actions undertaken gently." So we don't want to go and crush a person. We don't want to go and wound a person. We don't want to go and beat that person down simply because they made a mistake or they did something that wasn't quite right. We have to remember this and we have to um, go to them in love yes. because Jesus Christ is love. So we have to go to them in love and we have to let them know, hey, you know, let's talk. Yes. Um, I believe the scriptures say, come now, let us reason together. Um, so we can sit down, talk, work out that problem, and agree to disagree if yes. we can't come to a conclusion, and just agree to disagree. And yes, and, and we want to attack the problem and not the person. Exactly. Um, like First Lady said, um, be, take in consideration who you're dealing with. Um, a lot of people are at different levels in their Christian walk. You might have some who are more mature than others. You have some who can take and some who can't take. So you have to be very careful in how you're dealing with, for, for instance, a babe in Christ or somebody newly um, in Christ or new, a new person in your church. So you want to attack the, the problem and not the person. Uh, again, you want to show that love because the end result that you're looking for is restoration. You, the both of you moving um, forward together. And, and I don't know about you ladies, but a lot of times when I have dealt with conflict, I'm the one who, um, who have had to apologize mm -hmm. to someone, maybe because they didn't see their wrong in the situation. Maybe I was wrong, maybe I wasn't wrong. But um, we have to be willing to apologize mm -hmm. in those times when, when it's not received. What were the problem that we're addressing, it may not be received by the other person. Mm -hmm. So we have to be willing to say, okay, well maybe it was me. Maybe I did something um, that warranted, you know, this conflict and we have to be willing to to you know humble ourselves bite the bullet and say you know what i'm sorry but i love you um you're my sister in christ you're my brother in christ and and i don't want there to be a conflict with that within within us amen yeah. and that scripture that you are talking about now is bearing ye one another burdens mm -hmm. and galatians 6 and 2 it tells us to do that mm -hmm. you know because sometimes we have to take the, the apology, we have to be the one to apologize, yes. we have to be the bigger person mm -hmm. and let the people know that I'm not high, in my, I'm not above mistakes, right. Right. I'm not above making an error, you know, uh, I'm, I'm beneath you just like, you know, mm -hmm. you feel like you're beneath, you know, but we have to learn how to encourage people and let them know that, hey, I've been there. You know, I, I've been there too. You know, uh, I have walked away from God. I have backslided. Mm -hmm. I have fallen from the grace. I want you to know that in repentance and if and, and if you uh, can find a way, hallelujah, to come back to the grace mm -hmm. of God, yes. then God can receive you and lift you up out of whatever you're going through. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, this year is bearing one another burdens. Yes. Uh, people are going to be overtaken in a fault. Yes. You know, faults going to be found. In our lives, some people ain't going to be able to bear their trial 
of their tribulation that they're going through. They're not going to be able to handle that, that, that death. They ain't going to be able to handle that uh, uh, heartbreak. They ain't going to be able to handle things that, that come up in their life that going to be so heavy. So we that are spiritual, mm -hmm. we that are saved, going to have to be able to be there. In their time that they in their weakest estate to right. restore them back yes, right. to the grace. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what God saved us for. Yeah. So we can be able to pick up the, the ones that are weak and let them know Jesus loves you despite of all. Yes. We've been there. Some of us got that testimony. Mm -hmm. And know yes. that, hey, yeah, I lost them all. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But through the spite of it all, I was able to stay strong in the Lord. Yes. Right. You know, some people that's they that's they uh the one they depend on, that's their backbone. That's who they hold on to. I was so great and grateful and thankful to the Lord. My sister called me yesterday and said, I don't got back in church and I don't yeah. stop smoking. And I said, Lord, thank you for answering the prayer. Because mm -hmm. when Mother died, she just fell from the grace, you yes. know? And we have to learn that, that people are going to fall from the grace because some people just can't handle situations. Mm -hmm. They can't handle heartbreak. Mm -hmm. They can't handle disappointment. And, and we have to be able to be there to help to lift them up Amen. and to restore them. Amen. We have to remember that when there is a conflict in the church, we need to first go to the person. And if that person has, is not receiving it or they continue on with whatever they're doing, then we need to go to the pastor. We take it to the pastor. We talk to the pastor. and. Um, you know, we talked about, the ladies and I talked about this, um, and we were saying, you know, sometimes the pastors don't want to go mm. to the person that's causing the problem. Why? Because they don't want to lose that member. So they try to overlook it, which is a bigger problem. But we're going to talk about that when we come back. Yes. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Drum roll, please. Go so far to celebrate this 21st anniversary. They're giving you the anniversary gift of one general admission price for almost all of the attractions, including new attractions such as the Giant Slide, Ball Toss Arena, and Lawn Games. You'll also get the Giant Pumpkin Ball Races where you will race against the Giant Zorb Ball across the new grass field. Not to mention, you get the Corn Mazes, Haunted Castle, Mystery Tour, Walk the Plank, Del Oso Express Train, Hay Ride, Jumping Pillows, Scarecrow Ride, Petting Zoo, and so much more. And they still have all your favorites, Pumpkin Blasters, Zip Lines, and Great Kids Zone. Lower prices, more attraction. Del Oso Family Farm is located right off Interstate 5 in Lathrop, just a short drive away for fall family fun. Open daily all the way through Halloween. Plus, there's free parking. Visit their website at pumpkinmaze.com. And welcome back to TNT Teaching and Talking the Bible. And we are talking on how to deal with conflict. And with the ladies and I were talking earlier, and we were talking about uh, the pastors and how they need to um, really step up to the plate and handle that. And I just want to say this, when there's conflict in the church, I really believe that a church should have in place a clear plan on how to handle it. You know, decide how you're going to handle it, what you're going to do, agree on that, and then come, come together with that person or those people and handle that conflict and not just sweep it under the rug. A lot of times churches sweep conflict under the rug yes. and it's a big elephant in the room yes. and they're just like, oh, I don't, I don't see a problem. We're, mm -hmm. we're okay. Mm -hmm. Everything fine, right ladies? Yes. Everything's fine. There's nothing going on. And so we, they need to, and I'm still telling the pastors, I want to hear from you guys. You guys let me know how you handle conflict in your church because it should be handled. Um, and now we're going to have Sister Betty. She's going to come to us with some scriptures. I just want to share with you today um, Colossians 3 and 13. It said, For bearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, 
also so also do ye so in here it covers a, a two things that I definitely want to bring out for bearing one another mm -hmm. it's so important that we don't just get all upset and bent out of shape and ready to throw the pearls out of the church because mm -hmm. we know that they are about conflict mm -hmm. we know that they are about gossiping and we know that they are about uh, tearing down your name or, or, or talking about you bad but we need to learn how to uh, forbear them put up with them mm -hmm. pray for them mm -hmm. but in the meantime you still can let them know what's going on yes. you know you still yes. can, can pull them to the side and say you know sister or brother or, I, 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 I see that you got an issue with yes. something. Mm -hmm. And that's something I find that people don't do in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, they instead of that, it's always whispering and gossiping mm -hmm. going on. And, and by the time it get around mm -hmm. to the, who it need to get to, it's all out of out of yes. work. Exactly. You know, it's just yeah. don't fest all over the church and everybody is whispering and talking mm -hmm. and, and thinking that the pastor know about it. Mm -hmm. yep. a, lot of, a lot of times when it get to him, he don't even know what's going on. But people think that he know about what's going on, exactly. and and it causes a, a big division and a big confusion. Mm -hmm. And then in here also it says forgiving one another. Mm -hmm. We got to have a forgiving heart. Yes. We have to have a heart that will forgive. Mm -hmm. That we got to have a heart that will love, mm -hmm. and a heart that that's about peace and about the truth. Mm -hmm. It ain't about who right or wrong, yes. but it's about truth. Mm -hmm. It's about the word of God and. And standing and doing what the word of God is saying. Yes. And we need to teach that to the individual that's having that problem. Yeah. And you're out of the will of God. Because yeah. you're not doing what the word of God says. Yeah. This is what the word of God says. You can yeah. take it or leave it. But the word is right all by itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it ain't about what we what we think or what we feel mm -hmm. or what we don't hear. But it's what the word says yes. in Amen. his word. Yes. Amen. And then when we have those occasions when it seems like um, the pastor or the leader isn't responding mm -hmm. to the conflict, mm -hmm. those occasions when it seems like uh, they've allowed the conflict to slip under the rug, mm -hmm. um, we, we have to be careful. We still have to follow um, the pattern that has been set and how to deal with conflict. Mm -hmm. I, I love what you said, First Lady, about having a plan of action in dealing with the conflict. Mm -hmm. So once it gets to the leader stage, and even when we feel, okay, well, he, you know, he or she is not handling this situation, you know, they're letting it go by the wayside, mm -hmm. that's not always the case. And we always want to uh, fall back on the plan of action of how to deal with conflict. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to read Hebrews 13 and 7. Mm -hmm. And it says, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken into you the word of God, yes. whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Yes. So those that have rule over us, they know what the word says. Mm -hmm. They know that they have to act. Um, in situations of conflict mm -hmm. and we need to give them time to do it. It's not on our time It's usually on God's time a leader has to be fasted and prayed up in dealing with conflicts right. with with, yes. with people of today Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. We, we have we deal with a lot in the church body mm -hmm. So yes. we, we need to allow that leader the time to consult the Lord mm -hmm. and to handle that problem Just like God would have him do yep. just like we talked about in Matthew mm -hmm. um, Verse, I believe it was Matthew 18, 5 through 17. Mm -hmm. Jesus set out a pattern in how to deal with conflict in the church. So we need to let our let our pastors and let our first ladies um, give them time to deal with that conflict according to the way that God has given it to them. Mm -hmm. Not according to how we want to resolve the right. issue, <laughs> but how God has given it to them. And then we need to respect their, their decisions. We need to respect what they have decided to yeah. do about that conflict. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Well, just like we we see it, they see it too. Yes. A lot of times people think they don't see uh -huh. what's going on. Mm -hmm. But they don't sit up there high for nothing. They see the confusion among the congregation. Oh, yeah. yes. They see the, the bickering and the arguing and yes. the mm -hmm. underhand whispering and, and you not getting with that and then you not getting with that when that is up and talking or they end up doing something. Mm -hmm. They see that. Amen. And I like what you said, we got to give them time to handle and deal with that. Probably they're just praying. Amen. You know, and talking to the Lord how to deal with that individual. Because mm -hmm. I think one of you said earlier, some people ain't approachable. You know, mm -hmm. you got to be right. careful how you approach, uh, approach people. Yes. You know, some people you can't attack them right on. 
You know, yeah, they saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, but they can't take being told, you know, the, the truth. Right. Some people can't handle the truth. Be they can't patient. handle, handle um, being told that they in error. Mm -hmm. Or they wrong. Or, or they didn't do that correct. Mm -hmm. Because everybody want to be right. Mm -hmm. But we ain't all right. We here, we still trying to make it. To yeah. get to the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> so as long as... Um, we're trying to make it, there's going to be flaws, there's going to be errors, there's going to be things that come up. And how the leaders handle church conflict is uh, very important. Yes. Uh, I hope this has really helped you, and if you would like to hear more on church conflict, trust me, we have a lot more we can talk about. Mm -hmm. um, drop us a line, let us know, email us, you know, just let us know how you feel about church conflict and I really want to hear from the path from the pastors and I want to thank you guys for joining us yes. be with us next week when we have another hot topic see you then <laughs> <laughs>